Hey out there, this is the Designated Pundits. I'm Bob, here with Scott, Alex, and special guest Gerald Lucas, and we're here to make some predictions for MLS Match Day 7. Right, the time is upon us. It is Thursday night, March 28th. We have a great Saturday of Major League Soccer matches, and we're here to talk about some of the best ones of the week. Talk a little bit here off camera, but I want to introduce you to Gerald Lucas. He's a co-host on the Wise Men Say podcast. Gerald, how are you doing today? And let us know where we can find your work. I'm doing good. Uh, like he said, I'm one of the co-hosts of uh, the Wise Men Say podcast, the Columbus Soccer Podcast. You know, where we talk about all things Columbus crew and including some local uh, UPSL and NOSL uh, teams here in Columbus. Uh, you can find most of my articles on vavel.com slash USA. Uh, I am, you know, credentialed media to cover the Columbus crew as well. Love it. Thank you for taking the time here to be with us tonight. We have a whole bunch of good picks, and this is one of the first times we went through the show, Doc. We all make our picks separately, and when we all went to add them in, uh, we agreed on almost every pick. Almost every pick. So, you know, I don't know if that means they're going to be better or worse than usual today, but here is where we're starting. We're starting with Inter-Miami hosting NYCFC. Inter-Miami at minus 118, NYCFC at plus 320. Inter Miami here is taking on NYCFC probably without Messi during the early slate of Saturday matches. While they're going to be without their biggest star, they're going to be at home with a nice mix of powerhouse stars, MLS veterans, young talent, proven MLS Cup winning coach. NYCF show up with their usual or ragtag group of guys who could be something sometime, um, but that's just kind of optimism that hasn't come to fruition yet. So I'm really uh, looking at Inter Miami here. Um, NYCFC is going to be on my list all season long until they can close the talent gap on the roster. And besides just the talent gap, you also have a coaching gap here. Nick Cushing is not getting it done for this squad. And he was kind of thrown under the bus this week with the uh, NYCFC fans. Maxime Cheneau, the center back who, who played with them, who won MLS Cup with them, is returning to Major League Soccer, but not with NYCFC. Nick Cushing knew absolutely nothing about this, and, you know, NYCFC fans just found another reason to get angry. You know, uh, as for the total, I'm also taking the total of over two and a half goals. I think Inter Miami can reach that on their own. I think NYCFC is getting smoked here, so I'm just going to go back into the Inter Miami school goal scorer props and find anyone at plus 100 and over. That's probably going to be a good bet, too. What do you guys think? Let's start out with uh, Scott here. Uh, yeah, I totally agree with this. Um, in addition to everything you just said, uh, Inter Miami lost a few um, important role players to the international window. All those guys are coming back. Um, well, that doesn't massively improve like the star power of the squad, which is already, you know, league leading star power, even without Messi. The return of players like Diego Gomez. Federico Redondo and David Ruiz, uh, that really helps the team chemistry. That was something that was maybe a little bit lacking um, in this last week. I really do like Miami in this game, and I especially like that Miami is going to be at home because New York City FC, uh, since the start of last season, they are 1, 11, and 8 on the road. That is 11 losses. On the so road. so one eight and eleven. We do win win draw loss here at the designated. I, I went we by this, uh... I went by the official MLS website. They do win loss draw. Doesn't matter. They have eleven losses. That's too many. They only have one win. That's not enough. New York City FC on the road. Bet against them. Love the, the the Redondo pick here. I mean, he's been fantastic. He was probably the best player on the field two weeks ago for Inter Miami, mm -hmm. and he's going to be uh, looking to uh, shut down like Santi Rodriguez this week. I would love to see that happen in real time. Gerald, you had a strong opinion about this match too, right? I did. Um, I still agree with you know Miami's going to beat the Pigeons, but it all depends on what Inter Miami team shows up, right? Is it going to be 
pre Red Bulls match or is it going to be Red Bulls match squad? I mean, yes, there, you know, players were still out on international break, you know, out there, are, you know, on their international duty, but their back line is suspect. You know, they got rid of Kamal Miller, who's, you know, out there in Portland, to, you know, to help them. You're playing with, you know, senior citizens out there pretty much. You know, with Jordi Alba, Luis Suarez. I mean, you do got some young talent out there, but that that alone is not going to keep up, you know, keep everything up going in MLS, right? So without Messi, somebody that can draw a crowd away or keep people, you know, honest and on their toes because he's out there on the field. Now you're playing a a demigod team of you know inner Miami players. You still have Julian Gressel, who has a ton of experience. Uh, Rodano's, you know, those young legs. Robert Taylor on the wing. I agree that this defense is suspect, and that's why I think both teams are going to score. I have the total of over two and a half goals. I think that pretty easily hits in this matchup. Uh, and I just, I think that this is a really good matchup. As for the Inter Miami Red Bull game, I think that it was just a mismatch. Like, Red Bull is going to run every team's legs off. When Miami plays a pressing team, they're going to struggle. And I, I don't think that this NYCFC is anywhere in the caliber that the uh, New York Red Bulls are in right now. They don't have a game plan. They don't have a coach. Alex, you have seen what Tata Martino's done in this league. Are you jumping on Inter-Miami this week? Uh, you know, I don't like to take Inter-Miami when, when Messi's not playing. I'm in the minority here. But I, we're talking about NYCFC here. I don't know what this team is. So I, why would you put your money on a team where you really don't know their identity still? And we're going to talk uh, prop bets. Uh, Nick Cushing's got to be right now number one on the list with Josh Wolf and Austin's like 1-1, you know, real close. If, if Bob, Bob's right. If they get lit up in this game, I would not be surprised at Cushing is history. Uh, this game, uh, I don't see, you know, barring some unforeseen circumstance, NYCFC, some of these young uh imported players that they got to haven't done anything start showing up in this game against a, a messy less Miami team. I don't see how this happened. I like Inter Miami, but I'm with the big guy here, older team into Miami backline suspect. We've talked, I've talked to you guys before into Miami. They're going to drop points more than we think. I think this season supporter shields definitely out. They're not going to be close to that, especially when Messi's out with international duty stuff like that, an older team, but this is NYCFC, man. I don't know what they are. I, w I would not put my money on NYCFC against anybody, even Austin, going forward to see something else. The next match I'm going to go to is the Houston Dynamo hosting San Jose Earthquakes. Houston Dynamo is minus 120. San Jose Earthquakes are plus 350. This is another match I have two separate bets on. I have the Houston Dynamo at minus 120 and the under on 2.5 goals at minus 118. Both, uh, you know, slight favorites to hit. Houston Dynamo have been winning matches this season, going 2-1-1 one, one early in the season. Their offense is kind of sputtered without Hector Herrera there providing that service, but Coco Karaski is coming back from international duty. He usually gets a little hot when he goes away with Panama, so I'm hoping that he shows a little bit of life this week, and this Houston defense is just enough to probably keep the Quakes off the scoreboard entirely. Um, this this game is screaming like 1-0 Houston win to me, so I like Houston at minus 120, and the under on 2.5 goals at minus 118. Alex, this is one that we agreed on before we even spoke about it. Yeah, uh, I wasn't a big fan of Benny Ball when he first started, but Benny Ball could do some shit down in Houston, excuse my language. And, uh, I, you know, San Jose getting a win last week, the first time in the season, uh, winning again at Houston. I like, I also like the under that you talk about, like a one nothing win, something like that. He, uh, again, some scoring issues. I have concerns with Houston, but San Jose, uh, something's not right with San Jose. They're looking for a star player there. You know, Carlos Velo's link that didn't happen. They're looking for something until that happens. San Jose to me, um, I'm not really sold, and I'm going to take Houston at home in this one. And Vegas agrees. Plus 350 is just about, I think that is the biggest underdog pick we have of the week. So this is, you know, the except for uh, Atlanta, Chicago. I think that that one has worse odds. But, yeah, Vegas seems to be right on in this one. Uh, Scott or uh, Gerald, you guys have anything for us? Gerald, I'll let you go if you got something <laughs> you want to say about this game. I actually, uh, on uh, the show last night, I believe I took uh, – 
I took this as a draw. Uh, for the teams, I mean, it is in Houston. Show, show Stadium, you know, is always proven to be a tough, you know, tough, tough place to play. Um, I think San Jose was banking too much on trying to get Carlos Vela, you know, and nothing yeah. is, you know, those stocks have stalled out. So, I mean, they really didn't go shopping for another, you know, midfielder, you know, to help uh, generate some of that the attack but you know Houston does also have some players injured and just you know when they're playing also the bend don't break I mean but at a point you you have to switch up your tactics don't necessarily have to switch up the formation just switch up the tactics and I don't think uh Benny there is a you know doing that uh, I think he's just too stuck in his ways. But I think I did go with the draw. If if I didn't, I would go with Houston, you know, with the 1-0 win. They've just found a way, and I bet against Houston a bunch this season, and they just find a way. Ibrahim Aliu, who's not really supposed to be a big star at left wing, I think he has two goals, two game-winning goals. <laughs> you know, like, he is just brought just enough. I, I agree, this this attack is totally lacking Maybe Karaskia brings some magic back with him. I like when he comes back from international break, plays with Electra Juice. Houston needs a striker, but I think they are a couple pieces away from really being a contender. Not coming out the gate as hot as I would like to have seen, but I think that, uh, you know, at home against probably one of the worst squads in Major League Soccer, I, I think they're going to do it. It's going to be 75, clear skies, 0% chance of rain tomorrow in, uh, in Houston. Come on, Scott, get on board. I am like 65, 70% on board. Sorry, that's my garage, everybody. Um, <laughs> we're we're going to mute Scott for a second. We'll bring it back on board. This happens like once every 10th broadcast where he has, you know, something uh, uh, something very, very important to say about the Houston Dynamo. So I'd like really? to... Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, Bob. I didn't know we had censors on the show, Bob. I had no idea. <laughs> we do. I can pull anyone off at any time. It's I don't, amazing. I don't, yeah, you yeah, only trigger the ops every five shows. It's gonna happen wow. again in like one minute. Uh, look, look. I, I think the point is, I love Houston's sort of like intensity, resiliency. They do find a way to get things done. Uh, San Jose, there it goes again. I told you, it's fine. It's a quick one. Uh, San Jose, I I actually was really impressed with the way San Jose played against the Sounders this last week. I thought that was a very uh, gutsy performance from them. I, I, the Sounders are a team in really bad form, but they're not an easy team to play against. Um, look, but I, ultimately what it comes down to for me is that San Jose is a very different team at home versus on the road. On the road, I, they are kind of like shades of NYCFC. They just, they're just not nearly as good. Houston Dynamo, you know, they have tremendous home advantage. And that, I think, is what edges it for me. I'm on board. Get on the Houston Dynamo. But I don't expect this to look like... Um, it won't be the game of the week, in other words. Yeah, I don't expect it to be the game of the week. It won't be the game of the week. Like, <laughs> San Jose yeah. by any stretch. I think that San Jose's squad for a while has been like sneaky good i think they have good pieces i think they have good players but what they lack is like bringing it all together they're not quite at a level to actually make something out of it um but it's a team that can be competitive in a lot of games and make teams really work hard so i do see this one being something that like the houston dynamo are going to really have to work for this and this could be a game that's in jeopardy for a long time Zero zero for ninety minutes, and you know something funny happens at the end something of the match. Happens. Good. So you're still taking yeah, the over. Right, you're right, still too. taking the under, right? Everyone's taking the yeah, under. Yeah, yeah, taking the under. Great. Oh, the, the under. under. Yeah, I like the under. I like the. Under. Yeah, we're gonna look like fools when this game has like five goals in it. Hey, if Steve Card gets rid of that rat tail. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Wow. Nashville SC is plus two ten. They are hosting the Columbus Crew at plus one twenty five this week. Columbus Crew is a road favorite. Columbus Crew is. You know, getting results on the road, not quite the same as when they're at home. But I'm taking the Columbus crew to win in this one. They're the real deal. 3-1-1. One one. 
record dominant performances to start the season. They're probably going to win the supporter shield this season post for deep runs in all cup competitions this week. They see their best asset. Wilfred Nancy return from uh, after a brief illness in their loss last week. <coughs> Nashville SC is exactly who we thought they were. They can't score without Hani Mukhtar. Hani Mukhtar hasn't been scoring, and thus they are 1-3-5 and five with only five goals scored this match. This is going to be another game without Walker Zimmerman, a player they could really use against the Columbus Crew, and they are going to be defeated at home by the Columbus Crew. On neutral ground, I think Columbus Crew gets like minus 165 in this match. So plus 125 just because they're in Nashville is fine. Nashville doesn't have a historic home field advantage or anything. They're pretty good at home. Columbus Crew is pretty good on the road. So I'm going to take historical trends, throw them out, and bet on the Columbus Crew at plus 125 here. And Alex, I saw this was a pick that we had in common. Yeah, I mean best team in the league. I mean, I don't think there's any argument here for anybody. The Columbus crew, if Cucho is playing, I like Columbus crew, man. I don't care where the game is. And uh, the Nashville five, nothing last week, another team, another coach that the fans are starting to question. They got some issues. No walkers in the back. And we're going to talk about this later. Anytime goal score, I'm also looking at Cucho uh, and that it, walkers in alone will be there. Uh, this problem's the Nashville. If you can't score, and you gave him five goals a game. I mean, what? what, what <laughs> that's two major issues, man. <laughs> uh, I love. I, I really love Columbus team. Plus odds on the road on this. I would take Columbus and run. And Scott, you also agree with this pick? Yeah, I do. I do. I I worry a little bit about Columbus um, in terms of the injuries they just picked up. Uh, Rudy Camacho with an injury, and then uh, Christian Ramirez. Uh, I also. I'm conscious that Derek Jones got, you know, that red card suspension. And so uh, Columbus will be going a little bit deep into the bench to fill out that defense. And that could be that could be something that, you know, Mukhtar and, and Surridge find a way to take advantage of, you know, in a moment. But if this game turns into like anything of even looking like a shootout, uh, Columbus has Cucho and Diego Rossi, and they still have more attacking options, right? So, so I like I like Columbus, but I worry a little bit that uh, about some of those things that just maybe there's a chance for Nashville to get back into this game. Uh, the the thing I really like is is Cucho. Like Alex said, Cucho is an anytime goal scorer. I think you're getting plus one sixty odds on that right now. Um, I like that more than the outright. Uh, bet on Columbus. And you mentioned, um, you know, the the strike partnership, Cucho and Diego Rossi. You didn't mention Jason Russell Rowe, who's who's making a case to be one of those top three players at that sure. attack this season. I mean, this is going to be a trident very soon. So uh, we're going to go to Gerald. This is your this is your team. Take it away. So as far as depth goes, you know, it does hurt that, you know, we don't have uh Wilfried Nasi 2.0 out there anchoring that back line and Rudy Camacho. Uh, but we do have a Swiss Army knife and Sean Zawatsky, um, who's proven that he could play every every position out there. And we joke around every time at training and uh, ask him when he's going to get out there and throw the, the keeper gloves on. Um, and, he, you know, he's always saying, if I have to, I will. But, you know. That's one thing that Nazi has instilled in the players is, you know, he gets them out of their comfort zone and puts them at different positions. So they learn it. As far as Ramirez injury goes, still unknown how long he's going to be out. Uh, but, you know, Bob touched on it, Jason Russell Rowe. We also got Marino Henestrosa. Um, Max Arston has played up in, you know, the forward spot. Um Alex Matan is still questionable. I don't know if he's going to be out for this one. Um, so he's another creator along with Diego Rossi. Uh, but everybody focuses on th that circle there. And they forget about Yao Yaboa and Mo Farsi. Mo Farsi is one of those players that if he starts, you know, hopefully, you know, other teams are sitting there, you know, hoping that he goes out in the 70th minute. But if he's coming off the bench and it's it's a close game, 
you sort of got to be afraid of him with his speed and his ability to get behind that back line. And everybody's touching on Cucho. Cucho's mad. Um, he literally is uh, frustrated. And Columbus is also frustrated, especially with the way things played out in Charlotte last week. Um, I, look, every team that we play from here on out, just look out because it's a Columbus is going to scorch the earth. Um, and I and I hate to do this to Bob, but you know Columbus blanketed the Red Bulls, and I believe they you know they took that you know that beating. And unleashed anger against Inter Miami, right? So, I think Columbus is going to come out against Char- after Charlotte, and just start going on a war path. So, I take Columbus, you know, all day with the plus, you know, plus one twenty five. I mean, Cucho, you got to go anytime score. But uh, I also look at uh, over six over six and a half corners. That's one that, you know, I've been starting to do with the corner kicks and everything. Uh, and over one and a half goals on the safe side. Love it. Love it. Yeah. Yeah. Columbus Crew has been fantastic this season. And that's one of the teams that I think uh, faces up very good against Red Bull. You know, you got Darlington Nagby, cool as the other side of the pillow under pressure. And, mm-hmm. you know, I mentioned that when I was on Columbus for, for the preview of that matchup against them. And I think that, you know, just like uh, Inter-Miami faces up poorly against Red Bull, I think Columbus faces up fantastically. This is a team, they want to face Red Bull in the first round of the playoffs because they know uh, they, they know what they're doing. They have a coach who's, who's going to bring them to the promised land there. And everybody's back from international. So Aiden Morris, Patrick Schulte, you know, that also gives the, uh, the midfield their, you know, their, their starter, you know, their stars back. I like Morris the way he's played this year. Morris has looked real well this he's year. Been I like fantastic. Him. And there's a couple of crew two players, uh Cole Maroka and Taha Hebron too, and who's a generational talent. You know, 19 years or 17 years old. I'm sorry. 17 or or 18. He might have I think he just turned 18, but just a generational talent. And he got called up to the U19, you know, uh US uh youth team. Um, so look out for him as well. Love it. Let's move on to the next match here. LA Galaxy hosting the Seattle Sounders. LA Galaxy minus 110. Seattle Sounders plus 300. LA Galaxy is 2, 3, and 0 this season. I bet on them three times to win. You can guess which three games those happen to be by them being 2, 3, and 0. LA Galaxy, uh, you know, their matches have been exciting. They've been mostly dominant even when they haven't won this week they played the 0-2 two and 2 Seattle Sounders who are kind of trying to run it back this season with a roster that I think is is too old and maybe not quite as skilled as their front office and their fans think they are. Besides Pedro De La Vega, you know, who is going to be unavailable for this match. Traditional Western Conference powerhouse Seattle Sounders scored four times in four matches yet to find a win on the season. On the other hand, LA Galaxy, this is a team that is now changed. They have two wingers who I think are going to destroy the Seattle Sounders who are going to come out in a three-man back line. Um, Galaxy look great with Paintsville Fagundes streaking down the sidelines while their other new winger, Gabriel Peck, got married two weeks ago, was available, played a little bit last week. I think they're going to tear apart this Seattle Sounders if they don't make an adjustment out of the three-man back line. They're going to either score themselves or give Joe Viljic all the uh, all the meat he needs. They've been feeding him all season long. He's a high-volume guy, uh, and you know he's going to score two goals in this game if he, get, if he touches the ball as much as I think he's going to. He's going to have eight shots, six on target, and you know f- find pay dirt at least once or twice. You got to kick Seattle while they're down. Seattle is down, and I think that LA Galaxy at minus one ten. Uh, almost a surprise that they're even getting even money in this match. And I think that's because of prior results, not factoring in that those three ties, two of them, they were very, very dominant in. So I'm loving LA Galaxy at almost even money, minus 110 against the Seattle Sounders this week. And Scott, this is a pick we both had together. Oh, yeah. This was actually this was actually the first thing on the dock today. Uh, I was I was looking into 
these odds and I was like, this is insane. These are insane odds. Uh, I get that maybe you're looking at the LA Galaxy and you're looking at the fact that they haven't just like blown through their schedule. They've only won twice, whatever. But this Seattle team is so down. They're not keeping clean sheets. They're not keeping teams out. And they're not really scoring goals. Uh, they just, they're not doing any of those things really, really well right now. And they are injury ridden. Uh, they still don't have Joao Paulo back. That really hurts their midfield. That really exposes the defense. I just, I don't know. I, I feel like I must be missing something with these odds because the galaxy shouldn't be at even money in this. They should, their odds should be, you know, uh, a lot, I guess, worse. But I, I just, I'm looking at this. I'm looking at Jovalich to go and get that sixth goal in, in his sixth, you know, game. That'll be a record, I think, uh, to score in each of the first six games of the season. I just, I don't know. What am I missing? Something, Alex? Gerald, well, am so, I missing something uh, Before here? you throw over to Alex, I do want to mention Alex picked uh, Jovalich as a goal scorer at plus 195, almost 2-1, to one, Alex. <laughs> I mean, come on, man. He's, 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 do I got to explain? I mean, he's, he's so hot. I, mean, I saw plus one. If I, how poor Seattle is. I mean, has Seattle looked at any point this season looked decent at all, like a threat to anybody? And LA Galaxy, we talked about must watch TV. They're excited. They're exciting to watch too. Uh, the pencil guy. I mean, he gets the boy. He, people stand up out of the stands. How he's attacking guys one on one. For a second, I thought, wait, this got to be a trap game. The odds don't make sense to me. Something's not right here. Someone's got to be injured for LA Galaxy. I don't know about. It. It's about to come out the news. I, I don't like. Uh, you know, to me, I don't like Seattle at all. Uh, they they don't show me nothing so far. I love with LA Galaxy and I'm with Bob. A couple of those ties, they were dominant in those games. They should have won. Uh, is this another time where they're going to get you know dominant game and walk out of here like two two or one one? I doubt it. I'm going to take the Galaxy and I love Jovalich as a goal scorer. I don't even, I don't even take Paintsel, I think, as a as a goal scorer. I think he's at like plus 175, 165, something like that. I would even put money on him on as any time goal scorer. At the time of the game, there's going to be an 81% chance of rain, 55 degrees in L.A. with uh, wind at 11 uh, miles per hour. So there, there, there is a weather concern. I think that makes me want to double down on the L.A. Galaxy here. Uh, Seattle does have a pretty good defense. I, I think I mentioned the three-man back line. I think it was last year they were doing with that. I think they've been rolling out a four-man back line. But is Roll Down really a, a, a defender at this point in his career? I just I, I don't see what's going on here. If you pick the best three players on this team, uh, best three players in this matchup, they're all in the LA Galaxy. You have the star power there. You have the offense. I don't think they're going to be a clean sheet wonder in this. I think Seattle can you know, find the back of the net. You have Jordan Morris. Maybe he'll score a couple headers over some of these uh, center backs here. I don't know what's going on here, but LA Galaxy, uh, are you are you agreeing? Are you making it unanimous, Gerald? I'm going I'm going to make it unanimous. I mean, besides Columbus being the, the most exciting team to watch all season, LA Galaxy has it for me. No. You know, uh, it's, it's pure entertainment. It's, sport, it's sports entertainment. Honestly, and when you're an East just, Coast guy, the best part is you know your team's done, you're settled. You know, MLS like, after dark, man. MLS dog, after dogs dark. down for the night, <laughs> you know, wife's in bed, you turn on LA Galaxy, and, and now the real fun starts. Yeah, and I mean, I watched Joseph Panso against Inter Miami, right? And the way that he just was cooking their back line, it just was like, oh, you know, and then you have Puj into it, and you know, Gabrielle Peck. I mean that just that right there is is going to be a is going to compete with LAFC out there in the West. Um, love, I do love everything you say. Do I think that they'll win the West? I don't think so. But for this match, I do take LA Galaxy hands down. Galaxy and LAFC when they're great, it just makes MLS you know after dark so much more entertaining. Last year we kind of had a Western Conference that wasn't doing too much, not a whole lot of games worth staying up for, but we're cooking so far this year. To finish up, the Philadelphia Union at minus one twenty five are hosting Minnesota United at plus three hundred. In this, we had a little disagreement. Alex, sell us on your case for Philadelphia home. At well, both both teams are undefeated. Uh, Philadelphia usually at home is usually tough. Minnesota United is off to a great start. 
All on the uh, road, too. Great start. Uh, another week of Reynoso with the new coach in Minnesota. Something to be excited about going forward. But, uh, you know, the last three times these teams have met, they've tied. And sometimes I like to ride trends. And this is one of the times I'm going to go with it. I'm gonna, I usually don't pick draws in this game. I'm going to pick the draw. And why not? They're both undefeated. They're going to continue to be undefeated after today. And, Ale- uh, Gerald, you were on the opposite side. Do you think that there's a definite winner you're, you're picking here? I am. I'm taking Minnesota United, not just because they, you know, drew against Columbus, but it's the way that they're able to gut out, you know, close matches, scoring in that extra time, right? I think with Eric Ramsey there now, everybody's starting to buy in to him to, you know, the changes that the front office made, you know, by literally tearing down walls in the locker room and training facility, just a, a, a fresh start, right? Jim Curtin, I don't know what's going on with him this year. I don't know if it's because, you know, one, because of the injuries, you know, that some, you know, some of the players have had. Two, the front office really didn't do too much other than resign their free agents. I mean, there's a, a certain time that you have to change up your tactics. Um, it just it just becomes you know old and people catch on quickly, and you know, a few years on the you know a couple of years on the road they have the solution to your system. So we have a lot more film on Jim Curtin than we do of Eric Ramsey, and the film we have of Eric Ramsey is winning soccer games. So I think I'm going to agree with Gerald on this one. I'm taking Minnesota United at plus 300, and it's it's not necessarily because I think there is a lot of faith there. I think the draw is probably the most likely outcome. I agree with Alex there. But at plus 300 for Minnesota United, like, what are we doing, guys? I'm also going to uh, check... Uh, you know, Minnesota United plus the draw, what the double chance is going to be is probably going to be like a, like the minus 150 zone. I think that's probably the, the safest bet. Does anyone think Philadelphia Union is leaving with three points? Nope. Uh-uh. Bob, I actually, I 100% agree with what you just said. I, I really, anytime you're looking at like plus 300 for a team that has been as good as Minnesota has been this season, that's got to be appealing. Um, Philly has been incredibly resilient. They have found ways to, um, in some ways, like punch up and get draws that they really had kind of no business getting. Uh, so yeah, a draw is probably the most likely. But if you were like, if you were feeling Minnesota, I wouldn't be the one to come and tell you that you're wrong. Absolutely. Philadelphia Union was eighth in home field advantage last season with 2.17 points per game at home. It is a little harder to play in Philadelphia than anywhere else. But Minnesota has been, you know, kind of the road warrior of the last few games. I just think this is too talented of a roster. So I like Alex's bet. I also like Minnesota. Uh, and Philadelphia Union should not be plus minus 125. I don't know on what planet we're talking, what, what, what planet we're bringing up that uh, match at those at those odds, right? So let's finish up. We are uh, approaching the 33-minute mark, so we're just about done with this episode. Uh, I'm going to throw over to Lucas. Any other bets you have? Any other thing you want to talk about? I got uh, Portland beating Vancouver in the Cascadia Derby. Um, Portland, you know, just signed the forward from Cl- uh, Club America, so that gives them, you know, some added added attack along with uh, they also got Maxime Kerpo who's still one of, you know, still a top keeper in the league. Um, I just, I just like the way Portland, Portland is starting to come around, you know, with Phil Neville, you know, new, you know, new coach, new image. You know, I do like their kit, even though DeBellis is not on it. Um. (laughs) I like but that yeah. uh, Kamal Miller's on their team now for basically mm-hmm. free. That was just a fire sale yeah. for Miami. Mm-hmm. I like what Cor- Por- uh, Portland is cooking with. However, Vancouver is one of those teams that I absolutely love. I love when we previewed them. I said this is going to be a great team. Alex, Portland, uh, Portland, Vancouver, you had a strong opinion about this one. I, I like Vancouver at home with this one. Uh, I just like the way they uh, the way they play at home. Portland, 
I'm not a big Neville fan the way he was coaching in Miami. I know he's a new coach in Portland, a new coach. He might get the rise, but I am not the biggest Neville fan. Again, I agree with the the new signing from Mexico. Uh, the he looked good last week. The limited time. So he, yeah. he he made some great runs. So he, he's gonna, he's going to score. Now is this the week he's going to score? I don't know. Vancouver home and uh, Ryan Gold's on the field. I really like them. Uh, I think Santini is he back for this match? I think they cut his suspension. If I'm not mistaken. If, I think if Santini's back for this match, the crowd is going to be really into The players are really going to be into it. Uh, I'm going to take Vancouver. This, but, uh, you know, I've been burnt before with taking Vancouver at home uh, last year well, more than once, but I, I'm going to take – I'm going to give it another shot. Scott, I'm going to let you settle here. Crylock probably yeah. starting up front next to Ryan Gold yeah. in this one, a player you've seen quite often. I think both teams are going to score here. Who's, who's leaving with the victory? I think that Vancouver – has the edge but it's a very slim edge brian white i believe is out for this game according to rotowire yes um that hurts them a lot it's that dynamic between those three players between uh brian white demir krylock and ryan gold that makes them so dangerous in counter you know situations uh still i do think this vancouver team has enough to get up they are if I'm not mistaken, they are at home. Portland has been underperforming their numbers. I'm with Alex, um, and we talked about this yesterday with special guest Jose Tez. We are not big fans of Phil Neville or what he's been doing. We think that really this Portland team is performing as well as they're performing because their squad is really talented, not because of anything that Phil is doing. Uh, I think that we are looking at this Portland team kind of repeating what they did this last week. They created a lot of opportunities that should have been good, and then they kind of squandered them. They missed. They were, you know, wasteful. Um, I think Cabecita is going to be that guy who does get his goals. He looked very dangerous. He already looks like he's got uh, chemistry with his teammates, but they just are not finding a way to translate good you know positions into really good opportunities into goals so i i just think that vancouver is a more efficient team i think they are a more settled team uh i think that the kind of new coach bump is going to fall off for portland and phil neville's going to have to go and prove that he is a guy who can coach this team up i don't have a lot of faith in phil neville and so i think this is one for vancouver well, we're just going to have to watch and find out. Gerald Lucas, again, uh, thank you so much for being our special guest here. Good luck with that Columbus crew bet this, this weekend, and I hope you guys enjoyed the game. Thank you guys for joining us. Make sure you check out thedesignatedpundits.com, our new website. You can find all of our articles and uh, videos there. It's going to be a great season. Check out my sportsbook article there, and let's make some bets this week, and, and I wish you all the best of luck. Have a great weekend out there.